it's Vaughn here at your jazzdrumschool.com YouTube channel. Aloha, hope you're doing well. So I got a request recently uh, and I'm gonna comment on one of my videos from Lydia Hudson. Thanks Lydia for the comment and for the suggestion on a video. She wants to know if there's anything I regret not doing when I first started playing drums. Oh boy, where do we start? There are a few things I thought of, and the first thing on my list is I didn't practice doing things one count at a time out of time. This is something I teach all of my courses at jazzdrumschool.com. I teach here at my YouTube channel. I teach in my private lessons, everywhere, to anyone. And this is basically a principle where you just take a count, uh, anything under like for instance, you have a count one. What do you have under count one? You have a ride cymbal and a cross stick and a bass drum or whatever. You play that and you just do it one count at a time with no tempos. That'd be like one and then the next one, two. What's on count two? Oh, hi-hat, cross stick and ride cymbal. Then you do two and you just go through sequentially one count at a time. It is without a doubt the fastest way to learn anything with that requires kind of a higher level of coordination. So I really encourage you to practice everything new that you're learning, no matter where it's from, whether it's from my content or from somebody else's YouTube channel, take it one count at a time out of time. You're gonna learn it a heck of a lot faster that way. All right, so here's number two. From about my teens until about maybe 27 or so, I copied and emulated the great Jeff Hamilton and everything he played. Uh, and he's a great drummer, right? No doubt. Uh, and one of the best that's ever, ever lived. And I still love his playing, still love his playing. It's so musical and easy on the ears and great technique and swinging hard. Uh, but what happened was I got so focused on copying what he was doing that I didn't spend enough time uh, really listening to other drummers and listening to other musicians, bass players, piano players, sax players, so that I could develop my own sound. Now I've got a really good video about how to develop your own sound. You can click on the link up here and also down below in the description. But I spent a lot of time copying what he did, and it, in the end, it kind of was like, well, so what? Because he's already done Jeff Hamilton better than anybody can do Jeff Hamilton. I'm not gonna do it better. Uh, and I then kind of started to kind of find my own path and listened to a lot of other players, got into the different kind of styles of jazz playing and other things like that. Um, and I just, you know, kind of got to that place where I really wanted to have my own sound. So that's definitely something I regret. Uh, if you're out there, you're starting off playing drums, I really encourage you to try from the very beginning to create you on the drums. All right, so here's number three. 
Uh, this is a, a fear. I let fear get in my way. And what happened, I was in uh, at Berklee College of Music in Boston, and I was only there for two years. I had to cut it short because I got tendonitis in my arms. I was playing, uh, I think it was Wind Machine was the chart I was playing with uh, Ben Medler's big band. Ben, uh, you might be watching this, so you'll remember that. Uh, and uh, it was, you know, super fast and lots of kicks and loud. And, and I went to go and play drum fills, and my arms just completely froze up. I couldn't do anything. I mean, I was stuck. Uh, I just limped my way through the rest of that performance. And uh, then I realized that something was really wrong. So I went to the doctor and found out I had acute tendonitis, which basically put my drumming career on hold. Uh, I thought it was over actually at that point. So I uh, really got scared. I thought, wow, this is a big, this is a big barrier, right? How am I gonna get over this? How am I gonna have a career in drumming if everything is dependent on my physical well-being, right? as opposed to just my mind. So then I moved to Seattle where some of my family were living and I retooled and retaught myself new technique and how to do things and uh, you know, things got better and I got out there playing again. Uh, but it was just kind of this fear that was in my mind and what I did then, instead of really pursuing a career in music like I always wanted to do, I actually kind of, I went back to school, I got a degree in, in uh, something else in cultural anthropology, which was fun. And then I went off to uh, just get regular job and then I would play and you know get gig on the side. And lo and behold, over the years, I just got tired of working for somebody else. I wanted to do my own thing. So I eventually went back to music. Uh, now, it, it was cut, took me a while. And so if there's a regret I have uh, in, out of all this, there are two things. One is that I didn't really master proper technique and ergonomics of playing, which is one of the reasons why I'm very uh, conscious about and conscientious about how I teach technique at jazzdrumschool.com and here on my YouTube channel, because I don't want you to get injury. I only have two rules in drumming. Play what makes the music sound great and don't hurt yourself or anybody else. And if you're hurting yourself by playing, uh, you know, with bad technique, that's that's a dead end. So that was a real wake-up call for me. But it also planted a seed of, of fear, and it, it really kind of derailed my dreams in a sense for a while. So uh, I think the second part of the second lesson in this is to, even though you're going to go through adversity, and you will, uh, you're going to need to push through that and get support for that from great drum, maybe a great drum teacher or uh, other musicians in your community uh, and just keep working through things uh, because music is a reflection of life. It's not just kind of music. Music is, is who we are. Uh, the great Joe Hunt, one of my teachers at Berkeley said, we play our personality and that's exactly what it is. So uh, definitely uh, fear is gonna be there. You're gonna encounter trials and tribulations, but I encourage you to push through it. Now the last thing I'll say is that through my 20s and my 30s, I did continue to play. I played a lot of great music. But one of the things that I did was I let personal things in my life distract me from really focusing on what I'm here to do. Uh, and I really believe that we have gifts. We have things that we're good at that make us happy and other people happy when we use them. And drumming is definitely one of my gifts. Uh, and I actually wrote a book about that. I'll put the link above here and also down below in the description. It's called Gifted. Uh, and basically, I figured out like I've got these, I've got this gift, and I've got to use it. Suffice it to say, I made you know personal choices that really distracted me from being the best that I could be uh, on the drums. So uh, I think as you're going through and you're on this journey, and and because music is really a reflection of life. Uh, be sure that you make choices and surround yourself with people that are going to support your drumming dream. All right, so I hope that was helpful. And Lydia, thanks again for requesting that I make this video. Uh, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like the video if you like it. Uh, that helps it move and groove around uh, YouTube a little easier. And also drop a comment. Let me know if there's anything that maybe when you're starting off playing drums, maybe you're starting off now, uh, that you kind of wish you were doing differently or maybe wish you did differently uh, in the past. So uh, thanks again and keep swinging, my friend.